Uh, this video will uh, discuss talus or Taylor fractures. Um, I'm making this video because I think that there's just not enough resources uh, for people that uh, might experience uh, a, you know, a trauma and a fracture um, of the talus. Uh, so anyways, this is kind of my experience. Uh, this is my foot x-ray. Um, let me kind of go into the basics. So ankle fractures are, you know, actually um, fairly common um, occurrences. Uh, they happen while playing sports and different things. Uh, a talus fracture is the bone that lies within the ankle space right here, uh, just below the tibia and the fibula above the calcaneus. Um, this is the rest of your foot. Um, let me show you a picture of a normal looking x-ray. So this is where the talus would be. It just sits right in here and it moves. It has movement here, it has movement here, it has movement here. So it's a really, um, it's a cool bone because it allows for so much motion in your ankle. But then uh, it, it's also uh, hugely important because it, the entirety of your weight sits on that talus. So uh, that, part of the reason why it makes it so difficult to heal it. And another reason is that uh, the cartilage that allows it to be so hypermobile um, is also prevents blood supply and and uh, and essentially reduces the amount of blood supply meaning it takes a lot longer for blood to kind of um, revascularize and allow for um, a new bone to form after a fracture uh, so let me go back to my x-ray so this is an x-ray so uh, Taylor fractures occur in about two to three percent of all ankle fractures. So if you have an ankle fracture, there's a, a, a very slight likelihood that it could involve the talus. Most of the times it involves the tibia or the fibula. Um, all right, let me show you. Okay, so it usually the, the, the way that a talus breaks, uh, usually it's a high impact injury. It's uh, most likely in a, a result of like a car accident at a high rate of speed where the firewall essentially collapses and because your feet are forward against like the pedals of you know the gas pedal or the brake pedal that kind of you know sudden movement causing your ankle to to rotate this way upward and then causing pretty much a fracture because the bone uh, can no longer, it just doesn't have that motion and it just, it's pressed against this area right here uh, and it usually splits the talus in half. Um, doesn't always result in a uh, complete separation as in my case. Um, but uh, so there's there's four categories of a Taylor fracture, Hawkins one, two, three, and four. Um, Hawkins uh, two, three, and four are, are because anytime there's displacement, meaning they're no longer together the bone is no longer together and as you can see it's this part is here and this part is here and they're very far apart um, <clears throat> all right let me show you a few more x-rays so I had to go into the hospital I was thinking I was sort of praying I had a, a, a bad ankle sprain I was playing basketball and I hyper hyper dorsiflexion meaning the ankle just goes just up, up, up until it just broke the talus and I also broke my uh, tibia. Um, so as you can see right in here, um, and you look at this picture, you can see that the joint spacing is clearly absent because the talus is just missing. There's The talus is supposed to nicely sit in this area with lots of joint spacing uh, between, but that's not the case. So um, essentially I had to go into surgery and then they tried to do a closed reduction, which means they just you know, push and prod things under sedation, uh, which didn't work. And so they had to uh, cut in incisions and then put things back together uh, and then put hardware in place. So this is another picture. There's the fracture of the, uh, this is after they did a reduction, closed reduction. And then there's the uh, talus. You can kind of see there's better better joint spacing, although you'll see later um, kind of the issues that, that took place. Um, 
Here's uh, another picture. You can see there's complete separation and then there's obviously bone shreds and specks. Uh, so they'd have to go in and fix that. Um, this is what it looked like after a closed reduction. Uh, after surgery, they had to splint, uh, which means they put you in a pretty much a snug ace wrapped uh, plaster splint, which keeps compression and keeps your foot from moving. You're advised to not bear any weight. And because of the swelling that I had when I went into the hospital uh, and after the surgery, they were decided that uh, they were going to wait a week for swelling to go down before they were to uh, place hardware to really allow things to heal. Um, okay, so I guess I'll leave it there and I'll post another video, kind of uh, part one, two, three, four, something like that, kind of showing my recovery and what kind of things I can do now. Um, hopefully this will be a resource. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you for watching this video.